How can an amplifier put out more than the wall power provides? Magic, yeah. This question comes from John Melbo in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Hey Paul, how is it that so many amps, receivers, etc. claim to rate at certain watts per channel, RMS, but the required labeling stating that the amp power drawn is actually less? That would mean that such a device are so efficient that they actually exceed 100%, like the perpetual motion machine. <laughs> and we know this can't be the case. But what's going on here? It seems to be pretty widespread across many brands, even long-standing ones with great reputations. As far as I know, a watt, being a unit of power, doesn't differ depending on the application. And you are correct. So there's a couple of things going on. If you look, for example, at our power plants, and I know they're not specifically power amplifiers, but actually they are. So a power plant is our big AC regenerator. And it is, in fact, a very large Class AB power amplifier with a big power supply. I mean, just look at the thing. And it's huge transformer, big Class AB power amplifier. So it's a good example of, of what we're talking about. And I will get specific on that for you, because I know you, you, you have asked a specific question. So we rate our power amplifier, our, our regenerator, lower on the back than it is actually capable of doing. So we have to run by a whole bunch of rules and regulations that a 15 amp IEC input can only handle, I think it's, what is it, 70%? I, f I forget, uh, Bob Stather, our chief engineer, is really up to date on, on the specifics. But, but for the point of this discussion, it's, it's enough to say that we can't say it will take all 15 amps available, or 20 amps, whatever it is, out of the wall. They will not allow us to do it. So it's rated at something less than what is, it's actually capable of doing. And the reason they do that is for safety, because if, if you spec on the back that this thing is capable of taking all 1,720 watts that a 15 amp circuit, I think it's 700, but, 50, just, just whatever 15 times 120 is, um, then that doesn't allow for anything else to be plugged into that outlet, right? It, 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 most of the time, we, unless we have a dedicated circuit, as we've seen in those videos from my son where he installed a dedicated 20 amp circuit, most of the time we're sharing power with other things. And yes, we have circuit breakers that can try and, and, and help us uh, for safety purposes, not to draw too much current over a, a short period of time, but we don't want to kick the circuit breaker, we don't want to draw more, and we don't want to say that a unit is, is perfectly safe drawing that much current out of the wall and have that as our expectation, when in fact um, it's likely sharing it with something else. Now, that said, that's kind of why we have to do those ratings on the back that always are lower than what we're telling you you can actually get out of it. And we do the same with our amplifiers and pre-amplifiers, et cetera. So there are rules about that that we have to follow. But there's more going on than that. When you look at a standard power amplifier, there's a couple of things going on. It's RMS power is a function of a whole bunch of things. If, if we look at steady state RMS, then uh, yes, there, there's, there's a, a hard and fast limit that is the efficiency of the amplifier uh, minus however much you can put into it. So a, a standard class AB amplifier is usually only about 50% efficient, where a class D amplifier is 90% efficient. And not to confuse the issue, but our, our power regenerators are 85% efficient, despite the fact that they are class AB, which is something we can talk about later um, because it's not germane to this conversation, but we have a pretty fancy power supply that kind of tracks the, the incoming AC waveform and allows us to get far more efficiency than what's out of the wall, but nothing is 100% efficient. So those amplifiers can produce a certain amount of power depending on 
their efficiency, how much is wasted in heat, as opposed to how much is actually available to go into the speaker or the load that you're, that you're dealing with. And there's also something called peak energy demand. So when we have a power supply, and, and in our amplifiers we have big power supplies, which are more than just transformers. These are big energy storage units that have these big banks of capacitors so that if you had a peak excursion needed, so let, let's say you have an amplifier that's capable of putting out 1,000 watts, okay? Let's just say that from an RMS standpoint, you could put out 1,000 watts from a 15 amp load, which is, eh, you know, you have 1750 available, ignoring all the safety things. You have 1750 available, you can reliably put out 1,000. Let's call it a Class D amplifier, or maybe 1,100 or whatever. You might be able to put out peaks of 1,500, 2,000 because that exceed that input capability of the circuit because we have stored energy. For very brief peaks, you can snap and get a peak of energy that is higher than what is actually coming in and we do that with the power plant all the time. We can put for a power plant we can put up 50 to 60 amps 50 to 60 amps of 120 volt power to your equipment for very brief microseconds which is all we really need to, to fix that sine wave you're lucky, uh, well, you're lucky to get all 15 amps, and yet we can put out far more, 50 to 60 amps, in that situation because we have stored the energy in, in a battery of sorts. It's not really a battery, but if that makes any sense. So it's a combination of the way that they're rated, that we have to do, and how much energy storage and how much efficiency that they have. I hope that wasn't too convoluted of, a, of an answer. And I do appreciate you asking it. I'll talk to you tomorrow.